you had a crazy story, man, coming out, right? Obviously, you were supposed to right. go a lot higher in the draft, ended up going in the fourth round to the Colts, and then bounced around a little bit. But when you yeah. arrived in Pittsburgh, man, just talk about mentally what that was like for you. Dude, it was another opportunity, man. I, I really don't have to go over the backstory because it seems like everybody knows it. But mm. when I was a free agent for a month and a half, um, it was in that half, you know, it was like camp just started. It was the first time going into August that I wasn't on the team. Wow. And I had already been a free agent for a month. And then two weeks into camp, the Steelers, uh, my agent, Joe Panos, uh, reached out to me and was like, hey, uh, you're getting a call from a couple teams. One of them might pull the trigger. We'll see. Uh, just stay ready and keep training. I mean, I'd already been training. Um, and they called me in the second week of camp, flew me out, uh, and just went to Latrobe and did the dirty work, bro. But the best the best part about it, it's a blessing in disguise. And I don't say this like just because I'm in Pittsburgh right now or, or we're on your podcast or anything, bro. I really authentically mean this, bro. Like, Munch, I, like, it was – the best coach that I ever worked with mm. at the time and, and pounce and all the OGs, Gil, all those guys, like it was, was like, this was a blessing in disguise because it was like, not only can I like show my efforts and I was part of a, you know, we're a bigger offensive line, right? We got oh, bigger absolutely. guys. So not only do I blend in a lot more with these guys, but, and fit in too, in a personality standpoint, but it was just a blessing for me because it just seemed like, you know, it just when you go through that type of stuff, man, it just seems like, you know, the world's coming to an end mm. and you have to find ways to stay motivated. Um, you have to find ways to, to keep working. And the work part wasn't, it was just, the, the, the I just wasn't happy, bro. My girl mm. tells me now, she's like, you, you're back to like your normal self. Man. And, like it just it feels so much better, bro. I love it here. Nah, Straight man, up. That's, that's dope, man. And you hit on it too, man. Those guys in that room from a personality standpoint, they make it fun to be around the game. They make it fun to show up at work every day, especially Moan yeah. and Pouncey, man. I know Moan, he's still doing the check-in where he gives the roll call before practice. All the time, yeah. bro. All the time, bro. Big like, 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 and, and, you know, talking <laughs> crap to the defense. Yeah. Like, F you, Cam. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, those type of stuff. Yeah. Like, that stuff, bro. Like, that's that. That's the type of stuff that I not only did at USC and in mm -hmm. high school, but that's the type of environment I can be around. And I Absolutely, don't really want to bag. I don't want to bag on the other two teams, but I think really, if you just look at their death chart, you'll know right. that it's right. not like that. No question, man. No question. Like I said, I was a part of other organizations as well. I saw it firsthand too, man. It's different here in Pittsburgh, bro. Yeah. And that's a reflection. That's a reflection off of coach Tomlin. Straight up, you Absolutely. know what I mean, and like, and the people upstairs too, and and you try to, you try to go without like, you know, kiss ass and everybody, but really it's it's you're just speaking the truth. Like the environment is work your tail off and have fun with your teammates, mm -hmm. but you have to do it first, and that was the thing too. If you want to talk about like an adjustment, like I didn't come in talking at all. I didn't come in like it didn't take any of those older guys to tell me to be quiet or anything because. I was already going into my second year of the league, so I already kind of knew that. It's just when you finally earn it, they, they let you have fun, and that's mm, awesome to me. Absolutely, bro. D here, could you uh, take me through your journey going from the Colts? Um, was there something going on with, like, your weight and having to lose yeah. weight? Can you take us through that journey and, like, what was going on there and, like, how you bounced Chris, around yeah. a little bit? Chris Ballard, GM, could be sitting next to me, and I'll just be honest with you. He told me. He told he looked at me and told me uh, after I was drafted, we got to OTAs and he was like, you're 365 pounds. You're 350 at the combine. When I drafted you, I already wanted like I already knew I was going to have to take off a couple pounds. I'm, I, I, th th this is not acceptable. You need to be this by camp. Got to camp, uh, which is, well, the goal was to be 350 by camp and then chip it off. It, I was 358. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was like one of those type of things, bro, where I had a rookie moment where I have to identify with myself, like saying, yo, you need to change this. Like, like this is, you know, this is a real thing. But when you guys, as you guys know, when you get into camp, losing weight during camp is not what you should have been doing. You should have lost very it in true. the off season because it's very hard to do. Like you don't want to have to worry about taking in low calories 
as you're playing like in hundred degree temperature heat, you know what I mean? So, um, I didn't handle business. Um, at the time, it's not so much like I used to think like, Hey, look at me, I'm a draft pick. Cause I've never had that type of mentality. I just, uh, I had a binge eating problem, bro. I, and, and it's, it's crazy. I just had to remember that. I was like, why did it? I lose weight? And I just remembered it because at the time, when I went to SC, I played both sports. I played two sports. I played football and basketball, and I was legit. Like, guys will, you know, guys will, football, it's funny to me because, and, and most you know this, football players will always try to hype up themselves in their their, their other sports. Always. They used to play. And they always try to act like they were a good hooper. Like, I'm going to be real. I was legit. And so when I got to, when I got to SC, I was playing football and basketball at 290, 295. Yeah, that's wild. And bro. so with all that, so with at, at the same height I am now. So with all that being said, um, it, it's it's when that had to go, I had to medically retire because I had to have hip surgery at the end of my redshirt freshman year. The reason mm. why I redshirted was because I couldn't really bend well. And then I'm over here, you know, busting my tail all freshman season trying to, you know, do soft tissue massages, um, things like that. I'm like, why can't? And then they did x-rays and they said, hey, you have to sit out another year. Cause you got to have hip surgery. So I was like, you know what, let me just go ahead and focus on the sport. That's going to get me paid. Mm -hmm. And I had to give up basketball. When I did that from that five months of rehabbing over that five months of rehabbing, I went from being 295, 290 to 360 pounds. Like I put on that much weight, bro. And what happened was, is like, when you get to that point too, like over my whole college career, my knock always was like, you mentioned it earlier, Motes. I appreciate it, by the way, for talking about the drop of the draft. That's not emotional for me at all. Whatever. <laughs> oh, stop it. Uh, we, we, we all go through uh, it. We all drop through the draft. <laughs> I had coaches, bro. I had coaches look at me. I, dead ass. He might still be there. I, I forget his name. Black offensive line coach for the Tampa Bay Bucks looked at me. And to this day, I'll never forget it. He looked at me and said, you'd be one of the first or second tackles drafted if you just decided to stop eating. Oh, wow. And I, and, and like coaches would tell me that my agent would tell me that. Mm -hmm. And it literally like all this stuff, right. Halfway through it. And I'm going to go back to Indianapolis in a sec, halfway through the draft process, my Joe agent, Joe just told me, you know, and, it, and to this day, I always remember it was after pro day. I said, Joe, what are you hearing? Because I always want, I, I wanted to earn my way back into the top two rounds. I wanted to earn my way back into there. And he said, bro, there's no chance. He said, they, they just don't want to risk it over the weight. Wow. So Chris Ballard tells me to go there, blah, blah, blah. I'm 358, basically 360. And okay, cool. So they find me $6,000. Mm. Boom, right there. It's the, it's the one only fine. It's the only fine like I've ever had in the NFL. And it's the last time I'll ever be fine. Like, hey. like I promise you that straight up. Like no I will question. never get fine <laughs> for anything ever else in my life again. And that hurt, obviously, right? Six thousand, six racks, gone. So we get to the end of camp. I make the original 53 roster at on Friday. Saturday goes by. My girlfriend's in town for the last preseason game. We're celebrating, blah, blah, blah. They call me on Sunday, and it's the call that says, hey, Zach, can you come see Chris and bring your playbook? Oh. I'm, I'm driving with my girl to go wash my car at wow. that moment. Obviously, we didn't end up getting the car washed, and I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at her. Like I'm not even looking, I'm not even paying attention to her, bro. I'm just driving and crying. Like this is it. She's like, no, baby, but you did. I was just, did she did just didn't understand. And I looked at her. I said, baby, I, I need, I need, I need some quiet right now. So, <laughs> I we get into the facility, and Chris looks at me, and he says, I'm gonna be honest with you. I looked at this. And it's very, very similar to what Kevin Colbert did a couple months ago to fred johnson right mm -hmm. not because of his weight but was this this is what he said he said i don't think anybody needs right tackles at the moment mm. but you pissed me off with this whole weight situation and i'm gonna i'm gonna waive you you're gonna clear waivers you'll be back here on tuesday and you'll be on practice squad until you get your weight right when mm. you do boom so i'm just like okay cool like he hasn't given up on me but it was the first time that's, I mean, people have been honest, but it was the first time that uh, somebody just said, I'm not putting up with this. Yeah. Because like I said, I had weight fluctuations, right? And right when that happened, the next day, four teams bidded for me. Um, it was, uh, I forget what teams it was, 
and then you go to the team with the worst record. I was in Cleveland on Tuesday, actually <laughs> playing the Steelers. It was that. It was that. It was that. It was that game where uh, Chicolo blocked the or got the oh. when they blocked the punt in the end zone and Chicolo yeah, got the yeah. touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that was a dope game. Ago. I remember that. Yeah, that was the my, opening. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I was I was on the zero and sixteen team. Thanks for bringing it oh, up. Oh man. But, uh, <laughs> so Yo. my whole rookie year, bro. So remember, I told you I'm about three sixty. My whole rookie year, they weren't weighing me in. Blah 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 blah. Like they they just didn't care. The the, the organization just obviously wasn't shout out to Cleveland properly at that time. Shout out to Cleveland. Shout out to Cleveland, bro. <laughs> By January, obviously we weren't going to the playoffs, so we were done on New Year's Day. I called my trainer out in L.A., who was also an assistant uh, assistant head strength coach, Tim Karen at USC. Now he owns his own gym called Allegiant. I've shouted him out before. He's like basically my trainer that take, you know, talks to me about nutrition supplements, all this type of stuff um, throughout the last couple of years. I said, I need somebody to hold me accountable because I'm 420 pounds right now. Wow. And wow. I went back to LA. I went back to LA and that January and bro, just for like, you know, what is that? Eight months, nine months until you go to camp. Eight yeah. months. Yeah. Eight months. Uh, he, uh, he, he covered, he grabs this dictionary or this book, whatever it was. I, I sound really stupid, but I forget what book it was. And he puts his hand over it, over the word, his finger. And he says, read that definition. And he takes it off and it's binge. It's binge eating. So it was just, a, it was like being accountable, bro. And that was the, that was the, that was, I told him, I said, just, just hold me accountable. Like hold me as a person, hold me accountable to my career. Like I, I need that in my life. Like professional athletes, as you know, are given a lot of time and freedom to themselves mm -hmm. to have possession over the careers. I need guidance right now. So I've been, I've been on the keto, the ketogenic diet and the, the, the rest is history. So man, to answer your dope, question man. about Indy, man, that was it.